Hello, I'm Brigantia Blackford at the Blackford Grimoire. Welcome to the Daily Forecast for Friday, September 6, 2024. It is Freya's Day, Frigga's Day, Venus's Day, the Day of the Lovers, the 16th of Virgo, uh, the 5th of Vine, the 16th of Bear, and the 8th of Tumandur. The sun is in Virgo, mutable earth, representing industry. The moon is in first quarter Libra, cardinal air, representing partnership. Mercury is in Leo, fixed fire, representing ideals. Venus is in Libra, cardinal air, representing harmony. Mars is in Cancer, cardinal water, which is seeking security. Jupiter is in Gemini, mutable air, representing questing. Saturn is retrograding in Pisces, mutable water, which is to redefine dreams. Uranus is retrograding in Taurus, fixed earth, representing rebellion. Neptune is retrograding in Pisces, mutable water, which is about spiritual awakenings. And Pluto is retrograding in Capricorn, cardinal earth, representing transformations. Now, the retrograde reminders for Saturn, reclaim your authority. For Uranus, reconsider how you rebel. For Neptune, reclaim your magic. For Pluto, reclaim your ability to regenerate. And for Chiron, restore the heroic spirit. For our moon phase, we have a waxing crescent representing creativity. For the Libra moon, your dues are connect, mediate, look for solutions. And the don'ts are blind romanticism, wild emotionality, and manipulative flattery. Now it is the day of Venus and we have the moon and Venus both in Libra and seeking the restoration of harmony and a genuine smoothing out of difficulties that might have cropped up, particularly during the Mercury retrograde when it was in Leo, which uh, exposed uh, fragilities within relationships, uh, sometimes made them worse, sometimes uh, made clear that there were issues that really needed to be uh, set right and uh, and uh, healed. So if you have felt stuck in a bad place in your relationship, now is really the opportunity to adjust course and start undoing some of the damage that has been done. Now for today's tarot, we have three of wands. The number three represents the first stage of completion. The suit of wands is the emotional masculine, projective energy, the fire element, and drive. And its keywords are uh, explore unknown climbs, expanding horizons, uh, leadership, taking a long-term view. This is a card of an adventurer and someone who's at the beginning of that journey. You know, their first stage of completion is all everything that led up to them deciding that they were going to sally forth, explore the world and see what was going to uh, occur. Kind of what was going to happen to them and uh, find out what they were going to decide to do about it all. Uh, this is a, a beginning of a journey. So if you are feeling at the threshold of that journey, allow some of the fiery energy from the suit of wands to really infuse your actions so that you can get off to a good, strong start. Today's Celtic triad reads, three infelicities of a household, an idle doer of ill, keeping a paramour and lodging a priest. So we'll begin with the lazy leeches. Uh, an unproductive member of the household just drags everyone down. And you know, if you imagine that people are going to say, well, I don't know why Billy Bob just sits on the couch all day while the rest of us are going to work or tending the garden or keeping the house or doing 50 other things, uh, it breeds resentment, it creates problems, not something that you wanna be dealing with, let alone harboring in the household. And then infidelity. That is a biggie. Without loyalty in a marriage, the household is doomed. It really is as simple as that. Uh, people have tried to work their way around this. We hear a lot of excuses for uh, uh, polyamorous relationships or uh, consensual uh, affairs and you know open marriages and all this and that. How does it turn out? Look at those situations a few years uh, down the road. How does it all turn out? Uh, one uh, relatively famous example is the whole kerfuffle of uh, the show Sister Wives on TLC. I never watched the show, but for some reason, I do love the gossipy commentary on it. Uh, so I've been uh, keeping up with what's been going on with that family. And all of it really just stems from the fact that this was a plural marriage. It does not work. It created misery for everyone. It reinforced and created really terrible behaviors and it ended badly. And that's the story of these things. Things end badly. Marriage is meant to be exclusive. And then uh, with the issue of lodging a priest, uh, mouthy moochers in other ways, uh, if there's anything that's worse than supporting a lazy bones, it would be supporting a lazy bones who feels entitled to tell you how to live. And that's what would make lodging a priest uh, an infelicity. And uh, unfortunately, people who give themselves over to religious professions, uh, oftentimes they do earn this very bad reputation uh, for not 
working, for not being productive, for not looking to be of service the way that honestly their calling uh, compels them to be. Uh, so it's uh, stuff to think about. Things that uh, do you really want this inside of the house? And if it's there, how quickly can you shoo it out? Then for today's correspondences, they are centered on the theme of sensuality. The color is pink, the plant is the rose, the animal is the panther, and the crystal is rose quartz. Uh, romance is fed through the sense, uh, senses. It's about creating an atmosphere and allowing that atmosphere to infuse you and then getting lovey-dovey with your lovey. Uh, it's not about the intellect or your mind trying to quantify and analyze everything. Sensuality is experiential. It is emotional. It's about going with a very intuitive flow and allowing energies to collide in a hope what is hopefully a very delightful way it is not a left-brained activity which is why you can't left brain your, yourself into it now for today's practice um, how has your love life evolved since the winter? Uh, this is particularly important, I think, for married couples. You know, are you still in that same place or have you uh, grown as the seasons have progressed throughout the year? And then you might compare your natal Venus sign with the current position in Venus. Are these things getting along or are they not? Uh, contemplate the third eye chakra in autumn. Third eye chakra has everything to do with intuition, uh, being able to see things, uh, picking up on, you know, vibrations in the air, <laughs> you know, however you want to put it. Uh, what, how is that in operation during this particular season? What are you picking up on? And then today's hermetic principle, it's cause and effect. Um, autumn in a lot of ways is very much about the effects of things. You know, the causes were back in the spring and now we're reaping the, the effects here in the autumn. Uh, but look for uh, other interpretations of this beyond the literal and just see what you can come up with. And then today's which is pyramid uh, aspect is the interior. Uh, the interior, of course, is love, or at least that's what it ought to be. <laughs> you know, aspirationally, that's what it should be because uh, a sense of love is really what should should uh, motivate any practitioner. Uh, so where do you see love in autumn? You know, there's romantic, familial, amongst friendships, uh, the idea of uh, love of certain ideals or concepts or places, where do you see love being manifested? And then today's journal prompt, uh, are your dreamscapes more active in autumn? I ask this because the veil is thinning, and of course, the closer we get to Samhain, the thinner and thinner it will feel. And then uh, while Samhain is the low point, you know, things are still on the pretty uh, thin and sketchy side until we get about to the winter solstice, generally. So uh, we have uh, quite, a, quite an amount of time in which... Uh, we might be a little bit more receptive and open to getting uh, messages from the unseen. So is any of that coming up in your dreamscapes? And uh, that will do it, dears. Have a very magical day today. If you're interested, you can follow me on X at Blackbird's Brew. Uh, the Blackbird Grimoire appears on both YouTube and Rumble. And of course, you are welcome to join the Open Elder Witchery on Gilded if you're just looking for some good company. Uh, but I think that will do it for today. And I will see you guys next time. Bye for now. Thank you.